you take one away, it's two different meanings. We feel the same way about this video. So we're gonna bring up Reverend Thank you all for coming. Um, I know you all are anxiously awaiting hearing my response to the audio that was released. And um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background as well. So is everybody situated, mics and whatnot? So just for context, that's my family, my brother, and my first cousins. So now let me start with my statement. The statement that is being shared is a blatant mischaracterization of what I said in context. With that being said, I do understand how some who saw or heard the comments um, may have been put off, and for that I want to offer my sincerest apologies. What they did was cut one sentence and put it with the S word to make it sound like I said that they were that. Um, he has refused to release the whole tape. That would actually clear some of this up. My track record shows my ability to work with people regardless of their race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. This race has been one in which everything I've done has been put under a microscope, despite being underfunded, undercovered by the media outside of negative controversy, and under-resourced. Meanwhile, my opponent has been able to get puff stories without any criticism of policies and stances that are completely counter to the needs of the people of South Carolina. And now, with that being said, I'll kindly point out that I know some of my colleagues are calling for me to step down. It's the leadership in South Carolina that doesn't want me to succeed. This has very little to do with most of us everyday folks. They want some. They want someone that's unafraid. They don't want someone that's unafraid and unapologetic when it comes to fighting for families, exposing the toxic politics that they continue to perpetuate by fighting to hold seats and not make change just to stay in power. Y'all should be upset that they want to keep someone who's proven to be a community leader for all colors. Check my record. Right. Let the record show for itself. If that were true, there would be plenty of people that were white raising up against me that I have helped or that know me personally. But they're not here. And they're not raising up against me because they know that what they heard is not true. Y'all should also be upset that not only are they attacking me and I've been out here in the community helping, but they are countlessly year after year campaigning to have y'all reelect useless robots that make no change. That's right. First they say I'm a racist against blacks when the first video came out, and now I'm a racist against white. Well, here's the raw truth. I'm against shitty people of all colors. If you're not here to do a job, then take your A home. I have never purposefully tried to hurt the reputation of any of my Democratic colleagues in the State House. The call that came out with their names, it was unfortunate. No matter what my personal feelings were over the years, I've never tried to cause them public harm on purpose. But I find it odd that they are quick to speak up against one of their own. And even with Lindsey Graham's meddling in this election, have not called for his resignation at all. That being said, Representative Van Burr got all in his feelings about the first audio and has chosen, instead of coming to me, he chose the coward's way out, which shouldn't surprise me, because that's how he got the, on the ethics committee. He talks about being from a small, poor town, but has been elected twice as long as I have and never visited Denmark High School or Denmark Technical College, not once in eight years, both of which have dire needs. I know because I went. 
Don't even let me mention the drinking water that is still dirty there. But I'm the toxic one, me, a mother of five who got into this for the right reasons, which is on the Project Veritas tape that they won't release. Half of my family is white, and they are watching this play out in complete disgust because they know who I am. Joe Cunningham is already struggling with support from the minority community. And I'm not sure how attacking a black woman who has shown her worth, not through words, but actions, and has done more for South Carolina than he ever had in his one term, thinks he should speak before he knows the facts. Let me not leave out Berkeley County's own Tom Fernandez, who lives to post about me in his groups. The same man who called to congratulate me after my last win against his friend after saying they fell out and he was siding with the wrong kind of Republicans. Not to mention the fact that one of the most hated representatives on the Republican side, Jonathan Hill, has been, I have been the only person on a lot of occasions that will sit and eat with him. I was told when I first got to the State House not to talk to him. And when I asked why, they said because he had a Confederate flag on his porch. My response was so. We are here to do a job. When you go into battle, you don't have time to figure out who you don't like. You fight together so everyone can return home to their loved ones and live to fight another day. Now, if you'll indulge me for a moment, and this is for the audience at home, pull out your phones. Here in South Carolina, our house is on fire in the areas of public education, infrastructure, health care, and the cost of living. Google what Tim Scott has actually done to move the needle in any one of those areas. He's offered, he offered us plenty of excuses about why he's not passed any bills, but no tangible solutions. His hiding in the background days are over. These right-wing chaos agents can distort what I say and mi misrepresent my views all they want. I will never stop fighting for working families of all races across this state. P.S. I am trying to stop cussing, but y'all won't let me be great. I am really trying. But what I cannot tolerate is being attacked for trying to make sure that I'm doing right for my community. And unless you've been in this role, you don't know. And for those of you who are saying, well, why when Project Veritas approach you, don't you just answer the questions? When somebody runs up on you and you don't expect it, you have two responses that are natural, fight or flight. If I fight them, y'all will be here interviewing me because right. charges are pressed against me, right? right. So the only thing for me to do in that moment was to walk away quietly. And so that is why I chose not to address y'all each individual. And I chose to have y'all here. I am not stepping down. The people put me here That's and the right. people want a fighter. They are tired of these brazen politics where we keep electing these pretty cute elected officials who are nothing more than shit wrapped up in a pretty box. So if you don't like that and you don't understand who I am, either come out and talk to me for yourself, but listening to satire news from a company that's already torn apart Acorn that was out in the communities doing a lot of work. Project Veritas has lost several lawsuits over the past couple years, but nobody's talking about that. And I want to say thank you. I'm not sure which ones of y'all did the interview and were pressing him for more information about the journalist. Thank you for doing your job. Because what you heard him say was that he would not release the whole video. Mm. And what you also heard him say was that it was a journalist. But I got receipts. I thank God my intuition kicks in. I am so thankful. I got the picture of the boy on my phone. His name is Chris Williams. I will make sure every news channel in here get his picture before you leave. And when we talk about me and try to say, oh, well, she wanted to infiltrate the party. Well, guess what? There's an article that was released about mm, eight minutes ago about Project Veritas being used by the governor of, what, Wisconsin to infiltrate the Democratic Party. Also, the young man that came to speak to me, he actually came to the State House and asked another rep for me and had me come out, told me he wanted to work on my campaign. He actually has a fake website 
get out the blackboat.com, which I will also send y'all with his picture, with the picture of Al Sharpton. So who's tricking who? Who is tricking whom? I have a lot of text messages from this young man. So the fact that he didn't want to identify him is funny to me because I'm going to identify him so that people know exactly what's going on here. I was never interviewed. I never knew he was a journalist. Never. He presented himself as somebody who wanted to work on my campaign by telling me to go visit his site at getoutthebackboat.com. So with that, questions? So you're saying that what was released is different than what you said. What did you say? And how should white constituents feel about it? Okay, so what I was what I was saying at the time was, I know how to deal with white folks when I'm in that environment because I was raised in a town that's seventy percent white, and unlike a lot of the, I want you to understand that anytime I'm talking in that context, I am only talking about elected officials. I'm not talking about everyday folks, right? Because I was referring to my experience in the state house, so. I told him, I said, well, you know, a lot of the black representatives tiptoe around, like they gotta, you know, be overly polite and beg for things and do go out of their way to get little things. But honestly, that's not what that's not what our, our white counterparts respond to. They respond to authority statements. They respond to that because they're in a situation and you don't have to like what I'm saying. I see it play out every day. It's the re it's the reason why the Freedom Caucus exists because they were tired of their leadership telling them what they had to do. So they branched out, and now you see the war between the Freedom Caucus Republicans and the traditional Republicans. It is exactly what I was describing. And when I said, like, shit, I'm talking about, like, not literally, like, shit. You can ask any of my colleagues at the State House. We get along just fine. We take pictures together, we laugh, we do. We know what we're doing to campaign. And so that is what was taken out of context. And when I talk about things like experiences, y'all don't understand that. Y'all only see what y'all see from TV. Y'all have no idea what that is like. So again, understanding something that you don't understand is when I'm trying to explain it to you and then you record and take a snippet that's what I'm saying. He didn't play the whole recording because he knew that he would have to also play the part where I said why I was there and the reasons why I was there. But if a Republican were to say that they need to keep far left Democrats under their thumb, what would you say? They do say it. Big Dabney made a whole statement about black but people. But it's not out recorded there. and it hasn't been exposed. Oh, it, it has been exposed. It's in the news. But your, your statement also said that you were talking about the town you came from and dealing with white people. I didn't, I was not talking, so again, remember the statement about me coming from a white town and me keeping people under my thumb, two different sentences. They just cut it and put it together. You're talking about two totally different sentences that were cut and married. So you're, you're saying now that your, your comment is about elected white officials, not the general white population. Correct. Do you feel the same way, that you have to treat them like shit and... No, I mean, no, nothing is overarching in all, right? So just to be frank with you, I have a handful of people that I am friends with, right? And thank God they got enough sense to have critical thinking skills to know I didn't just wake up after my fourth year and, and become a racist. I mean, it's ridiculous to even think about it like that. It, and for me, let's, let me tell, tell y'all something. Let me be very clear today. If that's what you want to believe, after all the work that I've done in this state, then run with it. I'm not here to convince y'all that I am not a racist. I know exactly who I am. But if you want somebody who is going to work for you regardless, that is who I am. Where was this meal that you had with this person? It was in um, Nexton at an oriental restaurant somewhere. I'm not sure which one. And no. then, did, he, did he say he was a reporter of some kind? No. He wanted to work on your campaign. He said he wanted to work on my campaign. Black male, white male? Mixed. Mixed. Ma'am, even though um, you've said this and told us this has been spliced up, it's not what you said verbatim, um, in your release you did talk about the MAGA Republicans and treating 
them like SHIT. What do you think about that as you come before us today and tell us that you're not a racist and you don't believe things like that? That those are parts of your constituency. Those are parts of your constituency today. And if you beat Tim Scott in November, that that will be part of my constituency that I will represent. But that doesn't mean we will we will, we will agree on ideology. But that that's fine. But they might feel hard done by. But what your words are? What's your message to them tonight as you come before us? My message for them is check my track record. I have represented people who don't agree with me many times over in the last four years. This is not new. I've been doing this. And there are times people they, they insist that that was a clean tape. It wasn't edited. Of course they do. But, but it also is the second time that you've had to apologize, and the, you know, but the tape of you in the prison was the same thing, and you're coming back and apologizing for that too as well. That definitely was you, um, and that was not edited. That was state tapes. Why should anyone believe you? Um, listen, We're doing this again. Listen, I've I've done nothing wrong. So I think the first thing we need to say is. It came out, it was ugly, but in the context of what we were talking about, it wasn't wrong. It, the tape was chopped and screwed. And for Even me- the first recording, first that recording. was not wrong? That, no, 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 we're talking about this recording. So don't start, to, don't start marrying them together. Well, no, but- Again, uh, again, uh, again, let, so. again, let me be very clear here. Let me be very clear for everybody watching this. If you are at home and you are convinced that a woman who has a mixed brother and half a white family is racist all of a sudden one day because she woke up and you heard an audio of what you believe her saying, run with it. I don't have time to convince y'all how to be critical thinkers. That is not my job as an elected official. Now I came here to answer because I know people were wondering what was going on. But what I won't do is keep repeating the same thing. No, so, just, so, so sit with it for a second. We just, just received a I, message from Van Burn that says he was actually a graduation speaker at Denmark Tech campus. So he's calling you out for saying he's never even been there. I say go ask the people of Denmark. Well, he, he hasn't, he hasn't. Does anybody else, does anybody else have any questions besides this young lady? Yes, ma'am, I do. Representative, with the fact that you've had a couple instances with this Project Veritas so far, do you think you need to be a little more careful about who you have conversations with? I know that's the job of the elected official, but what do you think about that going forward? Well, I, I most certainly think I need to be careful about who I have more conversations with. But let, but let me explain to y'all a little bit about who I am. I didn't get in politics to impress people, okay? I got into this to help the community. I didn't get into this so that I can be a stellar person on camera for y'all. If that's what you're looking for, I ain't your rep. But if you want somebody that you can call when you're in a jam and that's gonna actually fight for you, now I could go down the list of people who already are representatives that y'all don't never talk about that I've had to go to their district and do work in, but I ain't gonna do that. But trust me when I tell you that they're watching this press conference and they know exactly who I'm talking about and they are grateful I'm not saying names. Well, what are the, what I, but wait a minute, my job as an elected official is to be a resource. My job as an elected official is not to impress y'all. My job is to be a resource for the people when they call. But how should white constituents feel after that report? The same way they felt before. Even after you said they should feel the same way they them. should feel the same way they did before. Would you like me to read some of the messages from my white constituents? So you're saying that the white constituents they are not, still supporting you. that they don't feel a specific way about you saying that you need to keep them under control, like under. I wasn't talking about white constituents. We were just right. talking about white representatives. Was that the same Is that not racist? Oh, Is that not racist? Oh, no. Oh, 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 Let's talk about the one time. One question, it, it doesn't seem like it was long enough to be kept in snippet, but you referred to uh, whites and you gotta keep them under control like kids, like children. You're talking I wasn't about, talking about white people. I was talking about Republicans. White Republicans, like you just said. You just answered yes. I was not talking about any color specifically. I was talking about Republicans. Given that representative, Working across the aisle is something that you have to, white, to do. Right? That you have to do now. When you work across the aisle, do you think that this will hinder your 
abilities to work across the aisle at this moment, and if you beat Tim Scott in November, or do you think this doesn't affect that? Um, no, I don't think that affects it. I don't think this affects that. Um, y'all have a really jaded view of what y'all think happens in politics. Y'all have no idea who the people at the state house are. None at all. Let me, Wait, let me finish my statement, please. When you talk about working across the aisle, that means both people have to work across the aisle. Do we all in this state pay taxes? Yes. Who spends the majority of the money that the state gets in? Who decides where that money goes? It's, it, and you can call and ask for the stats. It's the Republicans. But we all pay taxes, right? Right? So I put in for money for my library. After the first call, they took my money out. But guess what? That money doesn't come to me. It goes to the constituents, right? Right? I was told in my first two years that we don't like the way you talk. So if you don't change that, you're going to have to, you, you're not going to be able to, to get anything. Well, wouldn't you call that keeping me under your thumb? I mean, come on. If we're going to call a spade a spade, today is the day, y'all. If we're going to call a spade a spade, then call a damn spade a spade. Is that not keeping me under your thumb? Well, yes or no? Yes or no? Well, let me answer. So, so what I'm saying is, y'all don't know my lived experience. No. So when you judge me off of an audio, you don't know the context that I'm talking in. And he won't play the full recording. Are you worried about being bringing down, identified as bringing down the whole ticket now? That's why you got the governor, candidate, congressional candidate. No. I'm not, she should not be in the Senate race anymore. I am not worried about bringing the whole ticket down. Um, and I'll tell you why. I have done more work for the Democratic Party than any of those candidates that are worried about bringing the ticket down. Um, my work speaks for itself. The fact that I've been here two terms, even with the way I talk, even after talking this way for the first two years, even after all the obstacles, the fact that I'm still here tells you that the people in my district don't give a damn about language. They care about results. They care about solutions. And that is what everybody should be focused on. You're focused on whether you like, I ain't asking y'all to love me. I don't give a damn if y'all don't like me. But you need to worry about if I'm going to fight for you when it comes to resources, when it comes to your community and your needs. That is the main concern. And the same people worried about my ugly language I can show you my inbox full of folks with ugly language. Calling me a dog and all this stuff. Couldn't wait to jump on. What do you call that? What do you call all of these things? I would call it the same. So with that, so are you saying I by age the same? I think it's the same thing. Yeah, we'll hold some questions. So no, I get changes. I get now, I think she's mad because I think she's the one that came to the house. But if you come to where my kids are, I'm going to do like a mother would do, and I'm going to be protective. And even though on your tape for the interview you said that I told you to get off your get off my property, I actually did not, and I have it on my ring doorbell camera. I said, please leave my private residence. Yes, I thank you. So that's it. So we're going to let Pastor Dixon speak. And um, I also want to make sure that we remain respectful. I see where you're at. I know, and I was the same so way with Project so Veritas yesterday. I understand. So. so right now, I'm not even talking about fairness. I'm okay with all media asking whatever you want. But if you have an agenda here. I don't have an agenda. I, I didn't say, see, see how we're doing right here? I'm, I'm making clear what I'm saying. If, if, if we have an agenda here, that's cool. I understand. It. But right now, she came to get clarity. But that's what's going on right now. We keep trying to not get clarity. This is a tack here. All these audios been here since February and March. The same folks who dropped it in June dropped it now. They had it then, so why didn't they drop both at the same time? And did I stop serving? When, when was that? So, when, March, 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 it was in March. March, 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 March 12th well. was the sit down. Right. Uh, where do I start at? <laughs> I think I'm going to start from the end and then come back to my beginning, okay? In the end of this, I'm standing here listening to a lot of people that are making statements about white Republicans. 
You know the demographics of the Republican Party? We can't say the Black Republican Party because technically speaking, they're not the Black Republican Party. They are the White Republican Party. So we talk about white Republicans in general. That's the majority of the party. Now we can differentiate between your common run of the mill every day out here, white Republicans, and even the few black Republicans that are part of that party. But it's the difference between them and what's known as MAGA Republicans, who the overwhelming majority of them are white. I just want that to be clarified. Now, a lot of the articles that I've read over the last 24 hours had to do with two separate sets of people, excluding Representative Matthews. I'm not talking about Representative Matthews in this point. I'm talking about the two voices that the media seem to glom to and listen to, one being the voice of the South Carolina Republican Party, the other being South Carolina elected Democrats. One in particular, one who even in his own district that has water worse than Flint, Michigan, when we rallied up there, he did not show up for it and has not pushed for clean water in his own district since he's been an elected official. Now, if you watch it, holler at your boy. You got my number. Now, I, let, me just, let me just make some things about this, about, okay, the, the chair for the South Carolina Republican Party is this guy named Drew McKissick. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Drew McKissick. I got some quotes from Drew from yesterday. I'll read through right quick. Not going to be long. Drew said that Matthews has made it clear she's unfit to hold public office. And uh, we hear her advocating for treating white people like, I'm the pastor, so you've heard it already refuted that this was married together. This was created. In the world of digital media, you know how easy it is to be done. But for some reason or other, our media seem to be quick to believe a lie, even when it's refuted by the person that it's about. I think that's why, and we know each other. We know each other. I think that's why he's so adamant about pushing it. Because the lie is so easy to embrace and to love, and you get great ratings and all of that. But we're going to break that right here, right here. This dude, Drew McKissick, right? the head of the South Carolina Republican Party. He said this is overtly racist, point blank, period. What happens when a white family in her district needs help? Well, the history, she wasn't just elected to office. Check the record of her service in her district and see if there's any one time when a white person has stepped up and said, she discriminated against me. And if there's nothing there, don't believe what he said. Because he, I'm sure he doesn't even believe what he's saying. But it's the right thing for Republicans to say. MAGA Republicans. Drew McKissick is white, so I'm going to say a white MAGA Republican. All right? Since so he said, does Matthews assist them or does she treat them like crap? Then he said the fact that that question even has to be asked is even more than, is, is more than enough to call for her to resign. I'm really confused, especially in a state that's been controlled by Republicans, by the Republican Party for the last 20 years in the General Assembly, both the House and the Senate, and in the governor's office for all this time. What about black people? I've never heard them stand up for black people in South Carolina. What about black people? How have they been treated by a white Republican General Assembly and a MAGA Republican governor for the last 20 years? Oh, by the way, and two. MAGA, make America great again, right? United States congressmen. How have the black community been, and I don't hear him saying nothing about that. Nothing whatsoever. He said, we're talking about, an, in reference to Representative Matthew, we're talking about an elected member of South Carolina House of Representatives, one the Democratic Party had nominated for the U.S. Senate to run against Tim Scott. Yeah, Tim Scott, the same MAGA Republican Tim Scott who has supported the liars, most investigated treasonous president in history. Real talk. While Drew McKissick is spouting off yesterday, you all reported it, right? I didn't see none of y'all make that statement that he's also in his party 
has also supported, without saying a, well, I almost cussed, a darn word about the top guy in their, prop, in, in their party who disparaged women, who mocked the disabled, who disrespected gold star veterans, and even though he's never served a draft dodger, who slandered Muslims and Latinos, and who, uh, who said that black people came from a shit old nation. Y'all, excuse me, I said it that time. Because I'm quoting Donald Trump. The same one that Drew McKissick serves, the same one that Tim Scott serves, the same one that the South Carolina Republican Party serves, and the same one that Project Veritas, the MAGA Republican Project Veritas serves. When it comes to these Republicans or whatever, you've been had, you've been took, hoodwinked, bamboozled, to quote the movie Malcolm. Or X, I should say. But you ain't the only one that's been fooled and tricked and duped by them in order to blow this up against this candidate, the best candidate, and right now the only candidate that's running against him, Scott. Of course they want to get rid of her. Of course they do. Because they want their MAGA representative to stay in office to be the voice of them and not the voice of the people instead of letting the voice of the people be elected into office. Right. Yes, they do. And you ain't the only ones that's been duped into believing this lie. We got somebody that, in that first recording, Representative Matthews happened to go in on, called him by name, Justin Bamberg. And you know, sometimes when that ego get hit in the mail, they don't like it. They think about retribution. Get back, as we call it in the community. Bamberg was ready with that op-ed that he sent to Fit News yesterday morning before the release of this audio. How did he get that information ahead of time to respond? That's a question somebody should ask. That was in Fit News before it even hit the streets good. Okay. But you got Bamberg on this bandwagon, okay? She needs to step down. She's an embarrassment. And I ain't heard him say nothing about or challenging or telling the South Carolina Republican Party no, to stand up against Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I ain't heard him say a word. Crickets. Crickets. Brad Huddle. I ain't heard him say a word. At least I did hear from God Rutherford that he said, we got to wait and see how this plays out before I make a decision. Here's how it's playing out. People like Bamberg and Hutto and any of the other Democrats in the South Carolina General Assembly, either in the House or in the Senate, who decided that it's best to believe in Project Veritas, a MAGA Republican fake news carrying media outlet, to believe them over what their representative is saying, and many of them didn't even ask her what happened. Anytime that we as Democrats stoop to the level of being Republicans, we might as well just say we're Republicans. Justin Bamberg, be a Republican. Brad Huddle, be a Republican. Because as long as you go side with the Republicans, ain't no sense in trying to rep Democrats, because we don't roll like that. And it's a whole, it's a whole new level of Democrat that's in this state now. And the new level of Democrat is the kind that Crystal Matthews is. Right. The kind that ain't afraid to speak. Right. That ain't afraid to call somebody out. You say that what she said is offensive to you, but I'm gonna tell you what happens in my community. My community sees a champion. That's the right. black community, the poor community, the disenfranchised community, the Latino community, the poor white community. They see a champion in Crystal Matthews. Somebody who will get up and stand up and fight up and sometimes cuss up in order to get it right for the people. Right. That's what they see. So those, that, my, that small minded minority up there in both the South Carolina Republican Party and their fake leadership that won't call out their fake master, and those Democrats who are blindly shuffling along, following behind them, That's right. shuffling along and buck dancing, it's a new day. It's a new day, and we're going to work. This is Pastor Dixon. I was a 2016 candidate against Tim Scott. 
but I understand some systems about this, this community, white, black, Latino, Native American, Asian, I understand some things about this community that they don't. Because in my 70 years of living, I've had an opportunity to live in all of those communities and to interact with all of those kind of peoples and learn to respect all of them at every level. And we need people in our South Carolina House of Representatives, in our South Carolina Senate, and in Congress, in our United States Senate, who understand the community and the people that they represent and don't get in those places just to go along to get along. Oh, I'm in the seat of power. I'm the senator. No, we need people in these offices that are going to work for the people. And anytime they're not, they need to go. Again, in South Carolina, it's a new day. It's a new dawn and it's a new day. And those who represent the democratic values that I support, I don't, I don't support Republican values. They stand for everything I don't stand for. I'm sorry. Fight me. Call me racially prejudiced. Call me what you want. But the truth is the truth. They don't represent what Democrats represent, and their voting record shows it. We represent the people, and unfortunately, we've had elected officials who are not representing the people. And it's time for them to go. And it's time for the rise of people like Crystal Matthews. And there are others who are really going to be a voice for the people because the people ain't going to keep wasting their votes on them. Wonder why the people don't go to the polls in our community anymore? Why should they? Got a bunch of go-along to get-along people up in these seats who ain't never representing them. Bamberg, Denmark, worst water in the state and close to Flint, Michigan. And this man got